where I experienced quite a bit of challenge early on is getting the buy-in on the vision. We had a sales force that was highly successful. We have very good market penetration and a long tenured sales force. We have a lot of people with 20 plus years experience in the organization. And so to come up with a vision and tell them that we need to do some things differently here when they've been highly successful, you can imagine how that goes over. And so I think the challenge was how do you really tell that story and get that buy in there? And it's really around bringing some data to the party, okay? And getting them to acknowledge that things are changing out in the market faster than historically they have. And you have these macro trends that are going on in our industry and our customers are facing or needing more value from us than they ever have in order to overcome those things. And it's in our best interest to figure out and be the partner to bring that value. And that means us doing some things differently. And I tend to focus on the potential loss. So although my vision is rooted in how do we outperform the market and get growth, we really focused on what's the risk of staying the status quo versus growing. And you start there because I believe that psychologically people are more likely to respond and react to loss because we've already worked hard to get it. We have ownership there. Something that is additive, that is new, is out there. It's not mine yet. So people tend to value the business that they have versus the business that they don't have. By doing that and telling the story in that manner, I think that really helped get the buy-in of the organization and getting folks to understand, wow, he's right. That is coming. I am getting those kind of questions from my customers, et cetera. And so I think that was one of the biggest challenges that we really had in this journey was setting it out on the right path and getting the mass buy-in. Because as you guys know, it's at different levels in every organization. You got early adopters, you got people that come along, and then you got some detractors are never coming. I think framing it up in a manner in which would resonate with them was the critical piece. Just to paint a picture for our audience, we're going from a manufacturer's rep to a strategic selling organization. This is reactive. That's proactive. Right. This has no sales process. This has a repeatable process that we believe brings extreme value, will win faster, will win more often, et cetera. I think the biggest piece was getting the folks to understand that we're going to invest in them. And okay. I think the tools were around coaching our leaders, ensuring that they're equipped to coach, ensuring that they understand what leadership means in our organization. What does authentic leadership mean to us in our culture, yes. our values, because the team is going to need that through this process. And Frankly, that's an area that we're even going to take a step back here this year and go a little deeper. So really asking our folks to answer some questions, rate themselves on where they are with each individual on their team. And because we've had some new leaders along the way. Mm -hmm. And another thing that we've done here through this to allow for that coaching to happen, for them to spend the time with their frontline sellers is we've added resources. We've added regions. Span of control has been managed to be more appropriate so that we can spend the time to do those things. Quite a bit of effort there. Now, certainly data metrics, all that good stuff. We have that in spades now. We right. didn't always, but we do today and certainly able to raise that level of coaching and support to really help the team reach their goals and focus on them making the money and maximizing their compensation, et cetera. We started with coaching when we started out on this journey, because we're like, hey, that makes sense. These guys are going to need to be rock solid coaches as we go down this sales process. And then the reality is they were firefighters. That's the reality of sales management. And we had to take a step back. And again, the word that you liked, but we really live it constantly is reflection on a yearly basis. And as we're ending up a year, we're saying, where are we missing the boat relative to what we said we were going to do? And how do we then create the time and the energy to be put into that, what we call 
high value activity, what we expect from our frontline sales managers. I took last year and I level set with the team and I threw out a question to them at our leadership kickoff meeting. And it was just a question. How much of your time do you think you should spend coaching? And I got to tell you, nobody was right and everybody was under. So we level set the expectations to say, look, this is the job. This is where we're going to get the biggest return on investment. And so you are allowed, if I am bombarding you with any ass or if your director is or somebody, don't do it. You are freed up to spend over 50% of your time coaching out on the road coaching. And I frankly would like that number higher. 